Well, today I'm going to talk to you about when to sell your stock or ETF. It isn't foolproof. The indicators aren't going to always do what you want them to do. But what I want to show you are some of the attention flags that you should watch for to know that it might be time to sell your stock or at least tighten a stop, um, that sort of thing. So I'm going to talk about the, the what I look for when I'm ready to sell my stock or ETF. I don't know if I can get this to work. There we go. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, I have a bachelor's in mathematics from USC. I have a master's in information resource management from the Air Force Institute of Technology. And I've been studying the markets for well over 25 years. To be perfectly honest, I was starting to look at how to do the uh, on balance volume back when I was in high school. So my father taught me most of what I know, but I also am part of the CMT. We are decisionpoint.com. I also do work with stockcharts.com as a consulting senior technical analyst. We have a free blog on stock charts, but you can access that free blog going to our website as well. You don't have to go to stock charts for that. I also host the free decision point trading room. You can find that um, at decisionpoint.com on YouTube, you'll find all of my trading rooms there. I also do them live and you can sign up um, right there on the homepage of my website to, to go to these free trading rooms. So when to sell your stock? All right. Well, there are some key indicators to follow, but before we do that, we need to know what charts we should follow. I'm going to show you setting stops and some of the best practices that I use for setting stops because honestly, that's your best bet for when to sell your stock. Um, you can, of course, set mental stops. A lot of people do that. Um, I don't recommend it, but certainly a lot of us, including myself, will do that. The key is just to always have that stop in mind. And then we will talk about those attention flags that you need to keep an eye on. And then I do have some examples as we go along. And if I have time, I'll do a couple of live examples. I would love to take a symbol or two from the question box um, when we get there. But I do have some lined up if I don't get any symbols for that. But uh, my only thing is switching to my um, browser is going to be a little tricky here. I have one of these wide screens, and so sharing my screen is always a challenge. But I know you'll all bear with me. So which charts to follow? A lot of people ask me what time frames are what. And I consider long-term time frame months to years. Um, but you're going to look at those monthly charts and weekly charts and then daily charts when you're doing your long-term investing. Intermediate term investing is kind of on a, a daily to weekly basis, um, you know, a couple of weeks to um, a month would be a good uh, uh, intermediate term time frame investing. I use weekly charts and daily charts for that. Short-term trading is what we're going to talk about, though, because we really need to focus in on what's going on in the short term. And those are daily charts to minute charts. Now, I'm probably I'm not planning on showing you any minute charts today, but I do use them to time my entries and exits. And if you sign up for my free email list from my decisionpoint.com homepage, just put your name in there. If you sign up for that, you will get uh, notifications of when I'm gonna do my presentations. And one of the presentations I will be doing very soon is when to time your entries and exits into a stock. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, go to decisionpoint.com's homepage and sign up for the free email list and you'll get notified. Then there's, of course, day trading. I really don't do any day trading myself, but certainly you can do so using the same indicators that I use, but you use them on a minute chart. And then, like I said, timing those entries and exits with the minute charts. 
So what are the key indicators that I use for determining when to sell my stock? They're really the simplest indicators out there, and most of you probably have them on your charts, but maybe you're not looking for the right things when it's time to sell. I don't think it takes a ton of indicators on a chart to tell you what you need to know. The first indicator is my price momentum oscillator, the PMO. This is available on stockcharts.com for sure. I believe that it is also in, uh, in Thinkorswim and some of the other um, stock charting platforms out there, but not all of them have it. So I would say that if you can't use the price momentum oscillator, the PPO, the MACD PPO, not the MACD, but the PPO does a really good job of mimicking um, the PMO. So I would say that that's a pretty good, uh, you, you know, something you could use on your chart if you can't get to the PMO. But I think the PMO is superior. We developed it at decisionpoint.com and we think that it is um, just the best. Um, I use the relative strength index. It's not a key uh, portion of when to sell your stock, but it certainly does give you some information as to what the setup is on the chart for price. Is price overbought? Is it uh, oversold? That's kind of what you're going to get from the relative strength index. Then I use on balance volume. It's a really simple way to determine what's happening with a stock as far as their volume goes. And I can explain that a little bit when we get to the charts. Stochastics are also primary for me on when to sell a stock. And honestly, they're kind of my first stop for determining whether I want to sell it. Stochastics are really sensitive and that works in our favor for when we want to sell a stock but it can also work against us a little bit because it is so sensitive. Sometimes it's gonna turn down or move below 80, which is what I'm looking for. It'll move below 80 and maybe price isn't that weak. So that's why we need to confirm with what's going on with the price momentum oscillator and the RSI. The unbalanced volume, we'll talk about divergences with that. That's really what sets you up to know whether you want to sell your stock is based on those negative and reverse divergences on the on balance volume. And I will show you a few examples of that. But I will say that with on balance volume, you're not going to get those signals very often, which is why you really want to be looking for them. Because when they do appear, they tend to be really quite good at determining when a uh, stock's getting ready to take a bad turn. And then I use relative strength analysis. Um, I actually use three windows for my relative strength analysis, but today I'm only going to be concentrating on the one, which is the stock against the S&P. I like to see whether that's starting to fade, whether that's rising. That'll give us a, another sense of whether our stock is maybe in trouble. So here are all of those indicators on the chart. So here is your RSI up at the top. It basically takes the last two week trading range and tells you where price is in regards to that two week trading range. So imagine if you will, the RSI, this is two weeks going up and down. Um, and this tells you where it is on that range of the past two weeks. So in this case, it is uh, in negative territory, so it is considered somewhat oversold at this point. Then there is the PMO right here. Like I said, the PPO works pretty well. We also have on balance volume. And as I said, I'd explain this a little bit more. On balance volume, the beauty of this particular volume indicator is it is so simple to understand. It basically takes the volume of the day and if it's a down day it's that volume is subtracted from the obv line and if it's an up day that volume is going to be added to the obv line so it's really very simple to figure out what's going on with the obv and it does give you a really good sense um, as to what's happening as far as volume trends coming in 
And as I said, you really want to follow these divergences. Price should always follow volume. And if price is not following volume, there's a problem. And that's why we look for those negative divergences and those reverse divergences. Stochastics, there's your sensitive indicator there. You can see it travels around, it gets really bouncy. Um, it's a bit different from the PMO because the PMO is much smoother, but stochastics are the ones that give you that quick um, peek as to what's going on and whether you don't want to have a stock or whether you do. And there's your relative strength line in this case um, for this stock, Corsair, Corsair Gaming. Um, the relative strength is flat, meaning it's traveling in line with the S&P, um, which is okay. But personally, I want to find stocks that are outperforming the S&P, our benchmark. I mean, that's what we're all searching to do is to beat out the benchmark, which is the SPY. So I think it's important to know what your stock is doing in regard to the SPY. But one thing to keep in mind, relative strength lines can rise even when the price of the stock is moving lower. And that is only a function of the fact that it's moving lower, not as fast as the S&P. And so consequently, it's gaining relative strength even though the price is moving down. So that's why you have to take the relative strength line a little bit with a grain of salt. You need to know what the market as in general is doing. I think that's priority. That's part of what we do at decisionpoint.com. We have two reports. One of them gives you the overall temperature of the market and what the tides are. And then the other blog that I do is a stock picking blog. And we take our our exclusive scans and I take them and find the stocks that I think look the best coming out of those scans that will ride that tide of what's going on in the overall market. But this window reminds you that you do need to know what the overall market is doing and what the trends are and what the condition is. Currently, of course, the market is soaring. It's having a particularly good day today on the inflation news. So uh, we, we do need to pay attention to that. So right now, knowing that the market is in a bullish trend, um, we're gonna have a little bit better um, odds of finding a good stock. And maybe we don't wanna sell something too quick if the market in general is doing so well. So setting stops, what are some of the things that I like to do to set stops? You need to know your comfort levels. You need to know your limit. And that's what stops are gonna do for you. You have to sit down before you buy a stock and you need to have some number in mind as to how much you're willing to lose. Sort of like at an auction, how much are you willing to pay for something? In stops, how low can you go? What is the limit that you're going to set for yourself? Personally, mine is between six and 8%. That's where I feel the most comfortable, and that's where I generally set all my stops. And then from there, you can always tighten them if things are starting to look a little bit um, worrisome. We look for key levels of support. That's going to be really the primary place you're going to be looking to set your stops, and that would be at either horizontal support or exponential moving average support. We use exponential moving averages. It puts more emphasis on near-term data, and so that's why we like to use EMAs versus simple moving averages. And then, of course, prior resistance lines are also good for finding those key levels of support. Um, I also, I don't use it, but I know that you can, and I'm gonna show you a few examples with it but there's uh, the parabolic SAR overlay on stock charts. I don't know whether it's on others, but if you use this overlay, it'll also give you clues as to where you might wanna set your stop. So here's an example that I have right here. This is the parabolic SAR line right there. So it kind of can give you a sense of where you might want your stop. Um, in this case, you know, right here, it's awfully close but you can see that right here is where those dots start to split off a little bit more.
But mainly when I looked at this chart, it was easy to set the stop because we had a very clear support line right here. And so I set my stop just below that. The other stop I set, you can see here where the parabolic SAR kind of helps out a little bit with um, where the, line, the dot plot is, if you will. And so in this case, I went down, there was no clear support area where I could go that would give me that six to 8% stop level. So I had to work with the parabolic SAR a little bit here, and I came up with a 7.6% stop on Meta. These are pretty um, uh, new charts, so I guess if you want to take my um, stop levels and put them on your meta position, feel free. This is NVIDIA. Of course, everybody is very curious what to do with NVIDIA. Um, in the case of NVIDIA, when I did this chart, I was looking toward this support level when I went to that support level, it was only, it was a little bit of a, like a 6% um, stop and I wanted it to be deeper than that. So uh, I went to a 7% stop and you can see the parabolic SAR kind of had it lined up in there too. So um, that was where I set the stop on NVIDIA and full disclosure, I do own it along with just about everybody else I think these days. All right, so what are the attention flags that we need to look for? We're looking for those negative OBV divergences. There are also what I was calling reverse OBV divergences. I do have an example of one of those. Stochastics dropping below 80. This is the probably the first sign you're gonna get that there might be trouble with your stock is the stochastics dropping below 80. You want your stochastics to stay above 80. Stochastics is not an overbought, oversold indicator, in my opinion. Um, it's more of a location and where you want it to be. And you want it to be above 80. If stochastics are above 80, price strength is, is internal price strength is very good. And so it will remain and continue to move higher, or maybe sideways, but usually you're gonna see price moving higher as long as stochastics are above 80. So when they drop below 80, that's kind of your first attention flag. The pro price momentum oscillator tops, that's your other attention flag. There's something going on under the surface with momentum and we need to pay attention to it. So that's very important. The location of the PMO is also helpful and that if the PMO is below the zero line and it tops, that's a sell signal all the way. You don't need to really get confirmation from anything else. If the PMO is turning down below the zero line, that spells trouble. When the RSI starts moving below 50, that's showing price weakness internally. So that's another sign that maybe you don't wanna to continue to hold on to it could possibly become a, a losing stock. So let's look at some negative OBV divergences. So what we're doing is we're looking for price moving higher or price tops moving higher, but OBV tops moving sideways or moving somewhat down. This means price isn't following volume. If price is getting elevated like this, volume should be getting elevated too. And if volume is not getting elevated, that tells you that, that investors aren't so interested in this stock as much as um, it may appear. So that is usually a sign of trouble. Of course, this did turn out to come in at a time to, to let you know that um, there was trouble. You can also see right here where these OBV tops right here are moving in decline. And you can see these tops back here are rising. So that's another sign, like I said, of a negative OBV divergence. You don't wanna see these. They don't come up that often. So you're not gonna see these very often. Typically the OBV is gonna move with price and that's the way it's supposed to be. Price and volume should be hand in hand. So you're gonna see the OBV do what we call confirmations moving in the same direction. 
So back here, we had a rally starting, and you could see that the OBV was starting to rise, so price was following that volume. The volume kept rising. You had the price continue to rise, and that was a confirmation of that rally. But when it topped back here, and like I said, that was kind of a sign that there might be some problems, um, but it was confirming this little bit of a downtrend. So you can see right here where there was a downtrend. So it was actually confirming that particular move. Here's another example. This is CarMax. This is a, a pretty intense um, negative divergence and a very clear one where you can see OBV tops in decline and price tops moving higher. I will also say that another thing that um, should have tipped you off about this stock was this giant bearish filled black candlestick. This is a, a pattern that you're gonna see when price opens higher and then it closes lower. And in this case, it closed much lower than it's open, which was way up here. And that tells you that the price maybe doesn't have as much strength behind it as, as you may want it to. This is service now, and this is what we call a reverse divergence. These um, are a little bit more tricky. What you're looking for is rising tops on the OBV and declining tops on price. That is a reverse divergence. Why is it bad if the OBV is moving up but price is moving down? Because that means price is not following volume. You're getting excessive volume, but you're not getting the um, you're not getting the price rise to where it was previously. So you should be seeing price moving up above the previous price top if the OBV tops are rising. If they aren't, that's a reverse divergence, and it and it could spell trouble for you. Here are some other attention flags. So in this case, um, we're looking at a stock where we set the stop over here. We didn't get down to the stop before we had the attention flags. The attention flags came in first with stochastics turning down and they turned down before price started to turn down completely. So that was your first sign that you need to pay attention to this chart. That's what it says, attention, attention. And we had some other things going on here. Back here, we had relative strength rising, but it was starting to fade a little bit here. You can see the lower top there. Um, that's kind of a confirmation that maybe things aren't going the way you want them. But that was your first attention flag. The second attention flag was when the PMO gave you that crossover sell. Now, personally, when I see the PMO top, that gets my attention. Um, I'm not going to necessarily sell on a PMO that is topping because it doesn't always, you know, lead to terribleness. Um, you can see back here, we did get a little bit of a top, but price was still rising. But when we started to get that um, negative crossover, that was the key. And you can notice that at the same time, the RSI moved below 50. So it was moving closer and out, of, it was moving out of overbought territory, which isn't a bad thing to have your stock not in overbought territory. But typically you're gonna wanna see the RSI staying in positive territory. That usually means you're gonna get a nice rising trend out of it. So as soon as we lost that, fit, that level at 50 on the RSI, that was also another attention flag. And so you could see we were starting to get that decline and this was the intention flag and we're probably gonna see further decline coming out of GNRC from here. Here's another attention flag for you. Here I've marked the tops on this chart so we can even go back and look at some of those previous times where we had the attention flags but let's concentrate right here um, I, I did pull this chart back into December of 2024 and I can tell you I don't have the second chart 
but I can tell you this um, led into quite a difficult decline after these attention flags. So again, where, where is, what are we seeing? What is going wrong on the chart? Well, the RSI is doing okay, but this is the first attention flag. You have stochastics topping. They're still above 80, so that's okay, but it's still, it's an attention flag. You need to be paying attention. The PMO had topped. We don't have the crossover sell signal, so we could hang out here for a little bit longer, but basically what it's telling you is watch the chart. And if things start to continue to go lower, if stochastics then drop below 80 and the PMO is still falling, that tells you that you probably don't wanna be hanging on to this stock. And I will tell you that I know a lot of people like to, you know, kind of dollar cost average. Be really careful of that when the PMO is in decline like this. Um, that is some serious business. And especially when the PMO gets below zero, you really don't wanna be doing your dollar cost averaging at that point. Weakness is abounding when you get the PMO below the zero line. You do not wanna see that. Let's see, what else can we see on this chart? So before this big decline, did we have any attention flags? Well, we had a PMO that came down and gave us, a, looks like a crossover sell signal. It was close to doing so. Stochastics had dropped out of the sky and were below 80. The RSI didn't really give us much information up here, but you can see that had we waited a little bit longer on this decline, the RSI would have going to confirm as well with the decline. So that was your the attention flags to sell your stock there. What happened back here? Well, first of all, we probably wouldn't have wanted to get back into the stock simply because the PMO is below the zero line. But we did get a crossover on that PMO, so maybe you did take a chance and you got back in over here. But now we're getting more attention flags. The PMO is topping beneath the zero line. Again, this is really bad. You really don't wanna see this. If you get your momentum indicator and it is topping below the zero line, you have some serious um, problems with momentum and that is a high sign that you wanna sell your stock. We can also see that stochastics were already dropping back here on this decline. So we already were getting that attention flag saying, okay, things aren't looking so good. You need to be watching your PMO. And sure enough, the PMO topped and RSI was below 50. So all of those things were true here. That would have kept you from dealing with this very long, very difficult decline just by following those attention flags and not getting married to your stock. That's one of the problems that we have when we do this is we tend to marry our stock. We get very emotionally involved with our stock. And we can't do that. This is, a, you gotta keep emotion out of it as much as you can. We're humans, we're gonna have emotion when we trade, but that's why we do technical analysis, to take a lot of that emotion out of it. And that's what I'm trying to help you do right now with when to sell your stock, is you gotta take your emotions out of it and pay attention to the signs. Now, maybe they don't end up in a big decline, Maybe you end up with something like this, where it was a shorter decline and then we ended up moving back up. That can happen. It, it happens, I would say, not frequently necessarily, but it happens plenty of times. Um, so the key is you can sell the stock, but you can always get right back in if things start to look good again. Just keep an eye on this PMO. And like I said, stochastics are kind of the first sign. They're gonna give you that warning flag. And then the PMO is where you wanna look for confirmation and the RSI for confirmation after that. So I kind of do it in order there. You can also see um, with before some of these big declines, we had a declining trend coming up here on relative strength. We certainly had one going on down here. So not a lot of goodness going on in the chart back there. Here's another example. And in this case, we have quite a few attention flags. First of all, we have um, 
let's go first, stochastics. Stochastics drop below 80. PMO, you can see in this thumbnail, the PMO shortly thereafter topped and now has a crossover sell signal. We have RSI moving below 50. We have a breakdown of a short-term rising trend. We also have a double top chart pattern here. So there are plenty of signs on this chart that it's probably time to sell this, this stock. We don't wanna hang out here too much longer. Back here, you can see the PMO crossover sell signal, stochastics dropping below 80. Maybe we didn't get much of a decline here, but the PMO was continuing to decline and it told us that it, we still didn't wanna be in the stock and then we ended up getting this gap down move. All right, now let's see if I can get to some live examples. This is always the tricky part here, so bear with me. I can get to where I need to. And I wanna just show that one. Oh, no, that's not the one I wanna show. I wanna show that one. Okay, excellent. So let's look at a couple of live examples. Um, Pfizer would be one. This looks very much like the last chart that I showed you. We have a rising trend here that's been broken. We have a double top. We have a PMO that's on a crossover sell signal now. It had already topped before we got this gap down move. And stochastics have dropped well below 80. They're actually below 20, which is particularly bearish. That's, you want your stock to be, your stochastics to be over 80 um, because that's the sign of strength. You don't want it below 20 because that is a sign of weakness. You can see back here where it spent time below 20 and that was all during this decline. So a lot of bad things going on this chart. This to me is a chart that I would want to sell. All right, I'm gonna show you another example and then I want to go to my website and um, let you know what kind of specials I do have for you. All right, so another example that I had that I wrote down was AMD. And um, I'm gonna tell you with interest rates looking like they're gonna be moving lower because of what happened um, with the Fed today, uh, this may not be the time to sell um, this particular stock, but it is showing the signs of attention flags here. You have a rounded top coming here on AMD. You can see the RSI has moved below 50. The PMO has topped and is ready to give us a crossover sell signal. And stochastics have now moved below 20. All of these things tell me that I need to sell this stock now or at the very least, tighten up that stop. Make sure my stop is set, and I would be setting it right around that 200-day EMA, probably just above, because that would give us about a 7% to 8% stop if we got to that 200-day EMA. So this is a good time to tighten up your stop on AMD. <laughs> um, I don't know that you're gonna have as much trouble because semiconductors are interest rate sensitive, and if we're gonna start seeing um, lower rates, that's gonna help the semiconductors. So it's not looking so good right now here, but, um, and you need to be prepared for some more downside. All right, let me do one more example here. And here is Tesla. Tesla's PMO did turn upward. When I did this example um, yesterday, I was looking at it, we didn't have a PMO that had turned back up, but uh, stochastics are also turning back up. So at this point, this isn't a sell signal. We've got RSI moving back above 50. So Tesla actually isn't showing a sell signal right now, but let's look back in time. And you can see before this big, big decline here, we had plenty of warning. We had the RSI moving below 50 here. 
we had the PMO on a crossover cell signal on that day. We had stochastics dropping below 80. There were plenty of signs. Maybe we didn't pay attention to them at that point and you move further down. You've already experienced a loss of about five trading days. The RSI is still below 50. The PMO is on that crossover sell signal and look at where stochastics are. They're now below 20. So you have plenty of warning. You didn't have to sit it out and watch your stock go all the way down like this and wonder all the way down, uh, oh, it's going to turn up. I know it will turn up. But all of these technical analysis tools are telling you that it's not going to turn up, that it hi highly likely it's going to continue to move down. You have to listen to them. You have to listen to those signals. You can always, one of the things that I say is that rather than sit in a stock where you're kind of hoping, you're kind of betting on hope rather than, you know, the technicals aren't really going your way, but you're thinking, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go up anyway. You have to just think of it this way. Do you want to keep your money in something where it's working on hope? Or do you want to go out and find a better opportunity? There are other stocks. There are plenty of opportunities. And that's what you need to pay attention to. All right, really quickly, here we go. This is my website, decisionpoint.com. I do have a special that I'm going to be running for you. This is the blogs that I do cover. I have the Decision Point Alert, which I talked about earlier. And it is only $50 a month. This is your one-stop shop, your technical analysis newsletter. It's going to give you everything you need to know about the market. And we have diamonds, which are going to give you those stock picks that you probably will want. I do have a special. Let me see if I can get my screen over there to share it. Um, give me a moment here. Do, do. Ah. Oh, it's not letting me go over there. Um, Dave, I know you have my special. I think you had the right page. I think I that's did. the right page. Yeah. It's oh, with the yeah. Alert. I know. Okay. You were right. Yeah. Hang on here. There it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. So, when you sell your stock, we talked about the indicators that you want to use, the chart hey, you want um, to follow. Actually, we can't see it. I, I saw it before. Ah. It's just a white screen. You were good before. Main screen. There we go. Okay. Nope, I got your presentation. Okay. So here we go. This is when my live trading okay. room is. Sign up from my homepage. This is the special I have for you today. You can get, um, $100 a month savings on our bundle package. It normally is $119 a month. You can get it for just $19 if you use the coupon code WTT19. Um, I also run a free trial if you're interested in that instead. You can try us out for two weeks. All you need to do is you use the coupon code DPTRIAL and the number two. I apologize, I don't have it on this pa paper. Um, but that is all I have for you today. I didn't spend enough time on my um, product. So you got lots of information and a lot less commercial. So um, do me a favor and go check us out since I didn't uh, get all of my um, commercial in. Hey, and so the link uh, uh, is right there in the chat. I put it in, I also put both coupon codes there. So both coupon codes are in the chat. Also, they'll be with the recording, with the recording a few hours after we end today. So I want to thank Aaron for joining us. Thank you. I really appreciate your time and I'm glad that I was able to share with all of your viewers.